Now I invite Sri Ratan Vatal, Member Secretary of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister of India. Dr. Mahesh Verma, sir. <laughs> I can help you with the flowers. We request. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your seats. Jai Hind, Jai Rus. And our esteemed guests, I request you to please come to the lamp so that we can officially inaugurate our summit. Thank you, Your Excellencies. We request you to take your seats. In addition to our distinguished guests from Russia, it gives me great pleasure to extend a warm welcome to the representatives from top universities of India, who have also graced this summit with their presence. Your participation adds tremendous value to our discussions and reflects the strong commitment of Indian academia towards fostering international collaborations and relations. This summit serves as a platform for us to engage in our meaningful discussions, exchange innovative ideas and explore avenues for enhanced cooperation that will benefit our students, faculties and institutions. The diverse expertise and perspectives gathered here today promise to ignite your pathways of collaboration and mutual growth. Felt welcome to each one of you for joining us on this remarkable journey of collaboration and knowledge exchange. 
let us make this Indo-Russian summit a resounding success filled with fruitful deliberations and impactful outcomes. Uh, dear guests, we have for you translators, so if there are any issues with English or Russian language, so please you are requested to tell our team and the translators will be organized for you. Thank you so much. Now I invite the director of Russian House in New Delhi, Mr. Oleg Osipov, who will be the moderator of the inaugural session. Sir. Thank you very much. We are very glad to see you all, rectors, students, representatives of the diplomatic corps, other dignitaries in our Red Hall of the Russian Cultural Center. We should say that in the modern history of Russia, I think it is the first Congress of this type when dozens of Russian universities come to India to meet their partners also many of them, dozens, and exchange views and start collaboration or continue collaboration, etc., etc. So welcome uh, to Russian House in New Delhi. And uh, I will, we will start, we have a very tight program for these three days. The summit will last from the 11th to the 13th of April. And today we have besides the plenary session, uh, panel discussions and round tables dedicated to, dif to different themes. Tomorrow, we invite you all to the Le Meridian Hotel nearby. Well, Ambassador of Russian Federation in India, Mr. Denis, His Excellency Denis Alipov, please, please, you will be the first to speak. Dear friends, let me extend cordial greetings to all of you at the first Russia-India Education Summit. Education has always been a vibrant area of our bilateral cooperation, but this particular one is a landmark event, the first of its kind, meant for expansion of the regular dialogue between the governments of the two countries and education and research institutions and all interested stakeholders to identify and take forward technological, educational, business and industry applied projects of mutual interest. There are all prerequisites for success, both from the standpoint of the proud legacy we enjoy and the current robust partnership based on invariable goodwill and mutual benefit. The scope is endless and in many instances untapped or under underexplored starting from the Arctic research and nuclear science to chemistry and health and biotechnologies, and life sciences to engineering and material sciences to boundless, boundless opportunities of higher studies in Russia. Featured in the three days program are the round tables on employment opportunities for Indian graduates from Russian universities and the role of corporate sector as a dedicated contractor of students providing guaranteed employment for them after graduation. There will be a panel discussion on education and research under the, the BRICS umbrella and a presentation of the youth scientific startups. 
currently there are around 20,000 Indian students studying in Russia in numerous disciplines. This figure can and must grow. A positive development is the steady increase of scholarships provided by the Russian government. It is expected to grow from the current 200 to 500 specifically allocated for Indians. It is important to note the highest standards of the Russian education, even though many of our universities don't feature in various rating lists of uh, Western origin. Unfortunately, this is a pure geopolitics and bias at play here that object objectively doesn't reflect the actual high level of training we provide. Besides, the studies in Russia come manyfold cheaper than the similar ones in reputed establishments in the US and Western Europe. There is huge scope for expansion and diversification of scholars exchange and joint research projects. Over the recent years, we've uh, witnessed an increasing number of initiatives and the establishment of direct contacts between the Russian and Indian universities. In 2023 alone, MOUs and agreements and cooperation were signed between the Moscow International, uh, Moscow Institute of um, uh, International Relations and JNU and Amity University and Dr. Ambedkar University. Between Novgorod University and the University of Kerala and Kerala Institute of Medical Sciences. Between Moscow State Linguistic University and the Indian Institute of Social Welfare and business management in Kolkata. The Minin University uh, from Nizhny Novgorod has launched the Center of Open Training in Russian Language at uh, Chaudhry Charan Singh University. St. Petersburg uh, Electrotechnical University and Cochin University of Science and Technology have launched a joint master's program under which the students will be able to receive double diplomas. To multiply these dynamics, we should focus on new areas and formats that are in high demand. Twining programs, double diplomas, visiting professors' practice, and other forms of students and academic exchanges can play well to increase the quantity and quality parameters of our educational partnership. Needless to say, active promotion and the advertisement campaigns are critically important, especially on uh, the highly competitive Indian market. Here I address the uh, Russian participants particularly. The Profound participation in numerous education fairs should expand dramatically. The new national education policy of uh, the government of India provides opportunities to foreign universities to establish international branch campuses in this country. This initiative is a promising way to activate the joint work in India and strengthen bilateral cooperation in the personnel training, common educational programs, and scientific research. One of the big issues that still impede the desired level of cooperation is the unresolved problem of mutual recognition of education. Extra efforts are required on the part of the governments of both countries to arrive to a mutually acceptable solution that will be a decisive, decisive investment in the future of our partnership. It would open multiple new options and solidify opportunities for the Russian university, universities to open branches in India. Dear friends, my sincere desire is that this education summit 
becomes a regular exercise as a platform not only for the expansion of exchanges, but also for a regular review of mainstream areas in our education dialogue and formulation of recommendations to the governments to fulfill. I wish the participants the productive and inspirational discussions and all success in making the summit a long-term oriented endeavor. Thank you for your attention. Уважаемый Денис Евгеньевич, спасибо вам за приведенный анализ положения в области образования в сфере образовательного сотрудничества Индии и России. Я попрошу всех наших участников попытаться ограничиться пятью-семью минутами выступления, чтобы придать динамику нашей пленарной сессии. В России есть такое учреждение, которое называется Россотрудничество, которое занимается продвижением российской науки, культуры и в том числе образования за рубежом. И российские центры науки и культуры, русские дома в разных странах, они как раз являются проводниками этой государственной политики, гуманитарной политики. И я приглашаю сюда к микрофону заместителя руководителя Россотрудничества Павла Анатольевича Шевцова. Уважаемый господин посол, уважаемый президиум, уважаемые друзья, для отношений между Индией и Россией данный форум, данный саммит такой, как бы первая ласточка, и я уверен, что начиная с этого прекрасного мероприятия, и мы видим огромный интерес к этому к этому саммиту и даже в общем то наполнение сегодняшнего зала говорит о том что в общем то и со стороны российской федерации и со стороны индии это вызывает огромный интерес и я уверен что мы сегодня с вами закладываем первый кирпичик вот в такую огромную стену очень мощную стену мощный бастион я бы даже сказал сотрудничество Российской Федерации с Индией в области образования. Времена сейчас очень быстро меняются, и меняется геополитическое содержание, меняется экономическое, политическое. И сейчас в Российской Федерации исходит из того, что Индия является для нас стратегическим партнером во многих направлениях, в том числе, конечно, и в гуманитарном направлении. И образование, наука является очень серьезной составляющей частью. Российская Федерация, российские университеты сделали огромный шаг в развитии образовательных программ, научных подходов, молодежного предпринимательства и технологического развития. И мы видим, что индийские университеты тоже активно двигаются в этом направлении и представляют мировой общественности очень интересные проекты. И как раз-то основная задача нашего саммита с тем, чтобы и российские университеты, и индийские стали ближе к друг другу, чтобы ребята, которые выбирают свою жизненную траекторию и где им учиться дальше, и какими специалистами они собираются становиться и как будут их развиваться в жизни, чтобы они видели российские университеты, видели те программы, которые мы предлагаем, видели огромную географию России. Россия, так же как Индия, как раз и богата своими регионами, своими разными подходами к образу жизни, к религии и, конечно, к традициям, которые есть. Я уверен, что этот саммит придаст очень серьезное ускорение в развитии отношений между нашими странами. Я желаю всем успеха, я благодарю правительство Индии, министерство, ведомства, причастные к этому, за такой вот очень позитивный отклик и помощь в проведении э, в саммита. И, конечно, я хотел поблагодарить и российские университеты за ваш интерес, отклик и за то, что вы в активно в этом участвуете. 
Я уверен, что вместе мы общем, будем двигаться в этом пути формирования совместных, очень прочных отношений между нашими странами. И это в будущем принесет успех нашим народам. Я желаю успехов нашему саммиту. У нас прекрасных, напряженных три дня. И я уверен, что мы получим максимум впечатлений и обменяемся информацией друг с другом о том, чем мы можем быть друг другу полезны и как нам двигаться дальше. Всем успехов, всем всего наилучшего. Павел Анатольевич, огромное вам спасибо. Я должен раскрыть, ну, может, это не тайна, это и не секрет даже, идея проведения сегодняшнего саммита принадлежит Павлу Анатольевичу Шевцову. Спасибо вам за это. Теперь я... Давайте перейдем к индийской стороне. Я приглашаю сюда ректора университета Шарда, также председателя группы институтов Шарда, Прадина Кумара Гупту. It's a really honor to participate in this function, in this uh, gathering, and uh, I would like to extend my uh, thanks to His Excellency that uh, he invited such a large delegation, almost 60 universities from Russia, to partner with India. I think uh, there's a great opportunity for Indian universities and Russian universities to work together. And uh, what we foresee, you know, the, uh, just now you told me around 20,000 students are, Indian stu students are studying in Russia. But uh, I would say that uh, uh, Indian education has evolved in a very large way. And, and uh, I would foresee that if Russian students come for at least one term to build a better relationship with India and Russia. Because uh, India and Russia has been friend, you know, for almost right from independence. And I think our friendship has, is unbreakable on whatever may be circumstances across the world. So this next level of friendship can go by collaborating with academics as well as the joint research program. And uh, Sharda University is running almost uh, uh, 200 programs and uh, that include the medical sciences, dental sciences, engineering and management. I am inviting on behalf of Sharda University to all these universities to come and explore the possibility the joint research programs or uh, faculty exchange programs, joint PhD programs. So these are the opportunity we have and uh, We have a very large hospital, which is almost close to 1,600 bed, and uh, offering all kind of specialty, running all undergraduate and postgraduate programs. So we'll definitely we'll explore the anything we can work in the clinical research in terms of you know like uh, evolving the new techniques in, in terms of using the AI in terms of the medical education or uh, medical application. That also is a possibility that we foresee that you can come come and explore with us. I was recently was hearing that uh, there is almost very large number of soldiers which has been hurt and I think they are uh, struggling to get, you know, the implants off, you know, those uh, on, the, on the war victims so that we can also explore, you know, the joint working, you know, that how we can help, you know, Russian soldiers to anything we can do as a Shada hospital in the university, we'll, we'll be glad to do. I have a friends, you know, from... Dr. Mahesh Verma, he has been a vice chancellor, very dynamic person, so he can enlighten and uh, give more lights about the, you know, the next table of relationship. But uh, I'm inviting everybody, all of you to come to Sharda and explore the possibility. And uh, we have very uh, uh, renowned academicians with us and very renowned doctors. And definitely I would like to send my PhD scholars to work with you in terms of the all biotechnology Um, artificial intelligence or data analytics or medical sciences. And one more thing I'd like to tell you that uh, we already have a footprint in the Uzbekistan. We are running a university. There we're running engineering and management program and very soon we are opening the medical school and the hospital there. And uh, another collaboration has already been signed with the Kazakhstan. We are putting our footprints there, opening a medical college and hospital. So we will definitely work with Russia and uh, any opportunity for uh, us to work in Russia, we will be Glad to accept it. Thank you very much for inviting me to sharing this test. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chancellor Pradeep Kumar Gupta.
this university is a privileged partner of Rosatrudnishstva and of uh, uh, Russian House in India. And uh, next, I would like to invite here the president of the Association of Healthcare Providers, Dr. Gianni, please. Good afternoon. Uh, I remember uh, I spent almost 10 years working with the Russian scientist in the area of defense aviation from 1980 to 1990. In fact, I learned a bit of Russian during those days. Uh, of course, I will not speak today. Uh, but otherwise, I want to say that India and Russia have remained these strategic partner I think right from our independence. I think this is the relationship I find. We have up and down in some of the relationship with some of the other countries, but Russian relationship with Russian has remained stable and rather in the past 10 years, I will say, it has grown. We are working in the different area of defense, sustainability, energy, and things like that. So I am very keen now that I rather I want to thank the government of Russia that this kind of big delegation has come to India and I must say I have been Secretary General in the Quality Council of India for 10 years where I was dealing with the accreditation of skilling mainly and the healthcare institutions that we used to find that there is still huge scope of working together with a country like Russia, with whom we have otherwise excellent relationship. So in my priority, we will like to have cooperation in research and development, skilling, and joint program in higher education, and in some of these specific areas. I must say here that I represent here today 65,000 hospitals in India. And uh, let me also tell you, though there are millions of the educational institution in our country, out of which more than 15,000 are NAC accredited colleges and more than 800 NAC accredited university. So that is the kind of you know, area and expertise India has. So we will be really able to provide. One more thing I would like to say here that in the healthcare, Although at the time of independence, our average life of expectancy was quite low. But today we are matching with the life expectancy, Russia, Russian and Indian. So I think the India has really gone up and should be able to provide a lot of other expertise and vice versa in case of education and healthcare. So I welcome the delegation from Russia and I assure the full cooperation from in the area of healthcare education and other sectors of education. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Gianni. В медицинском, образов... в медицинском образовании будет посвящена одна из панельных дискуссий, которая пройдет сегодня же в русском культурном в, Росси... в русском доме. А что касается российского образования, в частности школьного, то оно входит в десятку лучших образований в мире. И я имею честь пригласить к микрофону заместителя министра просвещения Российской Федерации Дениса Евгеньевича Грибова. Уважаемые почетные гости, уважаемые коллеги, друзья, позвольте мне искренне поприветствовать от имени Министерства просвещения Российской Федерации всех участников саммита. Я хочу зачитать официальное обращение нашего министра. Уважаемые коллеги, Российско-Индийский образовательный саммит – это важное событие, которое объединяет представителей наших стран для эффективного обмена опытом и расширения совместных программ сотрудничества. Россия и Индия имеют богатое научно-образовательное наследие. Мы последовательно движемся по пути укрепления и углубления взаимодействия в этой сфере. 
Образование – это ключевой фактор успеха и процветания любого общества. Сегодня в эру глобализации и активного технологического процесса оно играет все более значимую роль. Саммит даст возможность представителям наших стран обсудить лучшие практики, определить ключевые направления для разработки и реализации совместных проектов и программ. Вместе мы сможем добиться больших успехов и обеспечить качественное образование для наших граждан. Благодарю вас за ваш вклад в развитие российско-индийского сотрудничества в сфере образования. Желаю всем участникам продуктивного общения, обмена идеями и формирования новых партнерских проектов. Я с большим удовольствием передам это приветствие министра просвещения Российской Федерации Сергею Сергеевичу Панкову, организаторам форума. Хочу добавить, что Россия и Индия в своей истории имеют богатейшую историю взаимодействия во многих сферах и отраслях жизнедеятельности. Мы, две страны, ориентированы на развитие человеческого капитала. И как ни вложение в образовательную сферу, в детей, позволит нам получить самый максимальный результат и создать поколение, будущее поколение детей конкурентно способными на мировой арене. Хочу заверить всех, что российская система образования готова обеспечить широчайший спектр сотрудничества в образовательной сфере и в части академических обменов, и совместных научных, и, научных разработок и различных проектов, студенческих обменов, которые позволят глубже узнать культуру, историю наших стран. Ну и, конечно же, наши вузы с большим удовольствием готовы принимать индийских студентов у себя на обучение, получение образования. От души желаю успехов, плодотворного сотрудничества, новых знакомств и э, дружбы в будущем. Спасибо. Мы все благодарим вас, Денис Евгеньевич. Спасибо. Вчера состоялись переговоры Дениса Евгеньевича в Министерстве образования Индии. Обсуждались подробно перспективы дальнейшего сотрудничества с Индией в этом направлении. И как вчера было отмечено на встрече, что отличительной чертой российского образования является то, что это не только образование, но еще и воспитание. И вот это вот как раз вот эта совокупность, сочетание двух этих факторов и делает его настолько привлекательным и действенным, и правильным. So now I would like to invite here the member Secretary of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister of India, please, Mr. Ratan Vatal, please. Ambassador Plenipotentiary, Mr. Ali Paul, Trade Ambassador, Mr. Rebus, Education Minister, Mr. Denise, Mr. Pavel, uh, Chef Tov, and Oleg, thank you for inviting me uh, to the dais. Chancellors of universities, rectors, representatives who've come from Russia for this uh, Indo-Russia education summit. I must say that I'm humbled that you've called me here and I'm in your presence. Actually, Russia has a long-standing and time-tested partnership with India, and this message has been coming across in all the speeches that have been made by the dignitaries just now. And development of India-Russia relations has been a key pillar of India's foreign policy also. Since the signing of the declaration on the India-Russia strategic partnership in the year 2000, October, India-Russia ties have acquired a qualitatively new character and enhanced levels of cooperation in almost all, all areas of the bilateral relationships, including political, security, trade and economy, defense, science and technology, culture, and education. There are two 
intergovernmental commissions which meet annually, they are high-powered bodies. And I think all this which is happening is coming out of this umbrella relationship that we have. Personally, I have very fond memories of my visits to Moscow during my younger days uh, as a civil servant. And I've been around for nearly 45 years. They were old times and the times have changed, but the relationships haven't. And my visits then were also connected with culture, education, and the work related to the culture and education ministries. And if I had time, I could regale you with many inter interesting incidents which we had when we used to visit Moscow and our counterparts would come to India. But back to the business of this education summit for which we are gathered, uh, where I would like to highlight a few things, which I'm sure is already in your strategy mix or your strategy matrix. And I found that in Ambassador Alipov's speech when he was making it. I will perhaps be echoing some of those uh, ideas, but I'd like to add something more as I conclude. As you all know, the GDP or the gross domestic product of India has crossed $3.5 trillion. Uh, this value also represents about 1.5% of the world economy. It may sound a small number, but in actuals and real value, it's huge. Now, where does education or where does the education sector fit into this economic framework? I'm just trying to give you an idea because then a lot of the things which were said would fit in to this matrix which I mentioned. Now, some reports say that the education sector in India was estimated to be worth 117 billion US dollars in financial year 2020 and is expected to reach nearly 225 billion by the year 2025, uh, another couple of years. This trend shows that this sector is increasing at a very fast pace. And I say this because the policy spectrum of education in India is being driven by the new education policy 2020, which had been mentioned by some of my speakers, uh, of the speakers on the dais. This is a very wholesome document that the entire nation, all the states, union territories of this country have accepted. And under its umbrella, the entire gamut of education is undergoing a very meaningful change. The school system is changing, the university system is changing, along with the regulation systems. And some of these was... And what we, are doing, what we are doing in this NEP 2020 is realigning the system to the aspirations of the 21st century, or the, or the coming century, which we are living in. Now, these changes are going to have a far-reaching effect on the aspirations of the students, coming out of the system, both at the school level and also at the university level. And also given the open nature of our economy, of the Indian economy, and also the growing incomes, many of these aspirants from the system will be looking beyond national borders to see and seek education opportunities, which again, give value for money. I was just glancing through some figures and I found that there are estimates that direct spending on overseas education by Indian students amounted to nearly $47 billion in the year 2022, which is expected to rise as high as 70 billion 
by 2025. This again is a huge amount. This figure includes, of course, tuition fees, spending, housing, other living expenses when they go out. Now this cake of the education services is a, a sizable amount and worth looking at. Another little uh, statistics which I just want to mention is that, that by the year end, there will be perhaps around 48 million tertiary level students. It's between 18 and 25. I mean, these are the student mass which goes into the higher education system, which is the largest in the world. I mean, I believe China would have about 37 million only. Now, these are potentially students from which a small percentage will go out to study. Now, we are talking of numbers, Ambassador mentioned, many others mentioned 25,000, 30,000. Now, the numbers which are going out to OECD countries or to the US or other Anglophone uh, countries is running in the 250,000. I mean, it, the, the numbers are really big. So uh, what I was just trying to say, the number of tertiary students, the cake in the market, I think there's a huge potential. And all of you are here, the universities are here. You're going around. You should, in fact, apart from Delhi, I think not now, maybe later, even go across to other big cities in this country, Bangalore, Chennai, uh, Bombay, uh, uh, Calcutta, uh, because the education system here is, again, uh, under our constitution, it's, uh, it's divided in the sense both the federal government and the state government have jurisdiction over it. So your engagements with state governments and provincial governments would also be very useful. Now, I had some suggestions about, of course, what has been coming up and what has traditionally been seen in this 25,000 or 20,000 uh, youngsters who go out. It's really in technology, uh, medical sciences. I mean, these are the preferred fields. But as was mentioned just now, that the university systems which you represent over here are very strong in the sciences, in technology, and even in, in the arts. I mean, that's a huge area which we can look at. I mean, I can tell you that my own a niece of mine who uh, many years back opted to go to Moscow to study in the State Institute of Theatre Arts and spent many years there. She speaks perfect uh, Russian. She runs a avant-garde uh, a theater company in Bombay. I mean, she, uh, there are people like this, which you, I mean, you just don't have to think science and technology. I think you're very, very strong in the arts. And that's another area which you can look at where there will be a demand, which will be mutually ben ben beneficial. It could be the film industry, filmmaking. These are areas which are also very strong, and India is also very strong in it. Another area which I can mention is also uh, teaching of languages. I think that will, it has been mentioned that how somebody said that maybe the Russian students would come here and we can go there. Actually, I uh, belong, I'm a civil servant and I have served in many ministries and organizations uh, across several decades. Uh, and one of the things I opted at that time in my younger years was taken advantage of a system like this. Uh, I went to France and I studied there. Of course, I was given a support, a bourse, a scholarship. Uh, it was after I got into service, and one of the things which I did was, the first year, I just immersed myself in learning French, just to understand the French administrative system. And there was a ministry of Francophony which was supporting all this. Now, Russia has a fantastic history of, uh, of, of language, of, uh, of literature. I think these are also areas which can be built on where these ex exchanges could happen, where we learn about the way you administer yourselves. I, I learned a lot about the European Union, about how Brussels works, how the French administrative system works. It's, there were a lot of similarities, there were a lot of dissimilarities. But I came back with a lot of rich experience. I think this is an, an area where under your larger, uh, these annual exercises which you have, Ambassador, you could think of it. 
uh, is just a suggestion. Well, I'm aware there are deeper government to government relationships on the science side, but these, these could go beyond. I'm currently working uh, voluntarily in an area of tuberculosis research. As you may know, you know, India has one of the largest uh, 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 caseloads of TB in the world. In fact, I was just, when the G20 uh, meetings were going on, I found that the entire BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, actually carry 50 to 60 percent of the TB load of the world. It's all sitting in the G20. <laughs> but also the money and the research is there. Why can't we work on these things uh, uh, across universities, scientific universities? This is an area which will, uh, which will be mutually beneficial, uh, beneficial to both sides. It's just an example where we can move forward and I think uh, the universities which I see here, I'm sure you have departments which can handle these kind of things. Another area which I must tell you, because I said in my old association was with a ministry, it used to be called the Human Resource Development Ministry. It was a, it ha happened in the 80s. It was an omnibus uh, ministry which dealt with education, culture, health, family welfare, women and child development, sports, and film de development. It actually half the, uh, the government was in that ministry. And I uh, recall that one of the biggest, strongest partnerships we had with, uh, with Moscow at that time was in the field of sports. I mean, here it's another emerging area which is coming up in your university systems in Russia, fantastic in that also. I mean, you may be science universities, technology universities, but today India is aspiring to be also a, a sporting nation. And I'm saying this because I was associated uh, in the organization of the Commonwealth Games. And one of the things which we did when we were working with Australia, which has a very strong, uh, again, a sports tradition, we tied up with universities in sports management. <coughs> there was mutual demand for all this. I mean, we can look at areas which are a little unusual from sports or so I'll now conclude because uh, I thought I could go on. Uh, there is no end to this. Uh, uh, there's a lot of potential in our relationship uh, which, we can, uh, uh, which we can build on. And again, I thank all of you to invite me here. You've invited me here. And I'm sure this summit will produce a lot of good results. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Vatal, for your detailed analysis of the present state of the global system of education. It is really changing, but it's, it's not changing by itself. We are changing it. Changing it. So we are here present in, in this hall. So, now, education is used to get some knowledge in some area. And it doesn't have to be medicine, philosophy, or something else. But also in trade. И поэтому я хочу позвать на эту сцену торгового представителя Российской Федерации в Индии Александра Леонидовича Рыбаса, который нам как раз расскажет об этом. Добрый день. Прежде всего хотел бы поблагодарить от лица торгового представительства организаторов данного мероприятия, данного образовательного саммита. Торговое представительство – это, конечно же, просто историческое название. На самом деле, торговое представительство отвечает за вопросы поддержки бизнеса в целом, торгово-экономических отношений. И, казалось бы, вроде бы напрямую на самом деле нет в компетенции торгового представительства вопросов образования. Но мы знаем прекрасно, что самый главный, один из важнейших – факторов, рыночных факторов, это человеческий капитал. Образование – это самая лучшая инвестиция, которая может быть вложена в человеческий капитал. Конечно, не очень просто 
мне обращаться к присутствующим в этой аудитории людям. В Древней Греции были такие адепты школы пифагорейцев, среди которых считалось неприличным публично говорить что-то, что уже всем известно. Поэтому очень многие вопросы, собственно, они известны. Я очень рад тому, что такой форум сейчас состоялся. Если меня, конечно же, спросить, насколько он своевременный, я, конечно, скажу, вы очень сильно опоздали. Потому что существует временной лаг, лаг между вложением в людей и отдачей в бизнесе. А у нас стратегическое привилегированное партнерство с Индией уже более 20 лет. Но слава Богу, что это состоялось. Какой еще один момент я хотел бы отметить. Вот рынок, он не все отрегулирует. В социальном государстве государство как регулятор очень активно вмешивается. Но рынок, он является таким индикатором. Если вы посмотрите сегодня, то большинство все-таки индийских юношей и девушек идут на специальности медицинские к нам учиться, на технические специальности, но прежде всего в тех сферах, в которых у нас есть своя хорошая передовая экспериментальная база, типа как у нас в Дубне, это вот МИФИ, МФТИ, такие инженерные институты. Это вот первый момент. Он говорит о том, что мы подошли к такому этапу, когда не только индийские юноши и девушки могут у нас поучиться, но и наши юноши и девушки могут поучиться в индийских вузах. Вот здесь правильно говорилось о той фундаментальной платформе, на которой мы находимся, советской. У меня у самого старшая дочь, которая вот в этом году 45 лет исполняется, она выпускница Университета Дружбы Народов, и, соответственно, учились вместе с ней мальчишки и девчонки из Индии. Но на сегодня, на сегодня я хочу сказать, что Индия – это совсем-совсем другая страна, не такая, которая была в советское время. И система университетов здесь есть очень сильных. И в том числе технологические институты индийских, целая система, они существуют. И самый, я боюсь ошибиться, но самый сильный, по-моему, бомбейский, есть и в Бенгалоре, есть и в Чинае. Выпускники очень большим спросом пользуются на рынке труда. И другие университеты многопрофильные тоже здесь присутствуют. Поэтому вот этот обмен студентами, я думаю, он очень важен. Ну, мы, конечно, как торговое представительство всегда открыты. В большей степени мы общаемся с представителями бизнеса. И в этом смысле образовательном у нас чаще всего, конечно же, пропедевтика. Мы больше раскрываем кросс-культурные особенности, особенности значит, правового регулирования рынка. Но, тем не менее... Грань какую-то провести между, условно говоря, чисто образовательной тематикой и бизнесовой тематикой очень трудно. Ну и, конечно, я желаю успеха всем участникам этого форума. Я думаю, что мы обязательно должны друг друга взаимообогащать. Ну и пользуясь случаем, хотел сказать, если наши индийские коллеги которые нацелены на сотрудничество с нами, они, конечно, отслеживают те процессы, которые у нас происходят. Я хотел бы сказать, что у нас тоже есть над чем работать, потому что мы достаточно часто и из одной крайности бросаемся в другую. Значит, у нас переходные периоды постоянно, то вот мы фактически у нас все время... Наука, она шла рядом с производством, с промышленностью, поэтому у нас даже и раньше министерство было промышленности, науки и технологий. Потом министерство образования и науки мы решили перенести в, значит, часть этого потенциала в наши университеты, сделать исследовательские университеты. Вот самое главное, чтобы мы занимались тонкой настройкой, потому что нам трудно будет вписаться в общую канву. Мы хотим вот от одной там системы отказаться, от другой. Дорогие друзья, много очень полезного и хорошего было наработано в Советском Союзе, но не нужно пытаться вот впрямую вернуться в какие-то предыдущие времена, потому что тех, кого мы там хотим обнаружить, их там давно уже нет. Давайте учиться друг у друга. Я считаю, что Индия – это наш оптимальный партнер.
лучше, чем Индия, я думаю, вообще просто в мире государств для нашего сотрудничества нет. Потому что у нас во всем общие интересы, у нас нет никаких противоречий. И, соответственно, желаю успехов в работе. Спасибо большое. Большое спасибо, Александр Леонидович. Действительно, экономические науки – это не только науки, это еще и искусство. И не всем, далеко не всем удается ими овладеть. Например, мне это вообще нужно. Окей, so we have another vice chancellor of an Indian university. It is Dr. Mahesh Varma, vice chancellor of the, of the Interprashta University, please. I understand that we are running late and uh, I'm the last batsman and I'm not supposed to last very long so I'll cut short my uh, address uh, but well uh, uh, all the excellencies esteemed dignitaries in the audience at the at the dais and the ladies and gentlemen it's such a pleasure for me uh, to be here as a part of this unique Indo-Russian summit and uh, I, I understand that uh, There are a large number of universities uh, which has come to bring about this higher education collaboration uh, between India, Indian universities and uh, Russian universities. So I would uh, just raise uh, some questions, just a couple of questions to cut short my address. So what are the several ways uh, or what are the different routes or different pathways or different roadmaps where we can bring about this uh, partnership? Uh, higher education partnership between India, Russia, and, you know, including BRICS, because uh, Mr. Vatal talked about BRICS, and I think we all together, uh, we make a very, very, uh, uh, very strong force. So one is, I think, initiating uh, cultural exchanges through academic collaboration, because when we, when our, our students and faculty, they visit each other, I think it's a great opportunity to interact and exchange ideas, learn cultures. In fact, uh, Mr. Watzel just talked about learning languages. So that's, a, that's one route. <clears throat> Another route is uh, joint uh, research projects, you know, collaborations, research collaboration. Because I think uh, when we pool in resources, when we collaborate, uh, we can certainly bring about more innovations. We can uh, bring about progress, scientific progress. So that's another area. Uh, the another one is through economic partnerships beyond higher education. I mean, going beyond higher education into industry linkages, uh, entrepreneurship uh, initiatives, and, uh, you know, finally bringing about technology transfer and startups, and also uh, engaging in broader diplomatic relations and engagement so that uh, issues of uh, mutual interest, which is not just restricted to education, I think much beyond can, can also be open. You know, education has always been a soft power, and we can certainly, through this soft power, we can, uh, uh, you know, we can really project ourselves all together at the global stage, and finally, when we bring about collaboration in higher education, it uh, brings, brings in a lot of capacity building of the partnership countries so that we can share our best practices amongst each other uh, in terms of knowledge and skills. So overall, uh, you know, when we bring about any such Uh, collaboration and we are talking about higher education we are talking about tertiary level of education I think that is that plays a very big and a very significant role uh, in deepening ties uh, between the countries whether it is India Russia and including the BRICS countries so what are the possible areas uh, where we can work on and Mr. Vatil has already uh, highlighted some of the areas uh, one you know the I think the most interesting area today, which is very relevant also, is STEM. That is science, technology, uh, and, and, and engineering, and mathematics. Because, uh, you know, India uh, has its own strength uh, in terms of space, in terms of artificial intelligence, renewable I energy. I the declaration of the India-Russia strategic can be, I think, great areas to work on. And as Mr. Watzel said, you're very good in humanity. And we'll be very good India, at Russia ties have acquired win -win uh, qualitatively uh, new healthcare character. and medicine. I think we've done and very well. India has done so well in healthcare and medicine. And we have some leadership from uh, uh, healthcare providers, uh, industry. I also chair 
NABH, which is National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare uh, uh, Institutions. There are 20,000 hospitals in India which are accredited, you know, as good as like JCI. So it's a great area to work on, work, to, work together. Social sciences and humanities, of course, very will be very, very mutually beneficial. Environmental studies and sustainability, I think this is one area which is so relevant today. Everybody is uh, t talking about sustainability and uh, uh, business management, promoting international trade and finance and economic growth. Uh, uh, so what are the low-hanging fruits? Okay, it's very easy to talk about this, but everything takes time, but something which we can, uh, you know, we can uh, certainly utilize as a low-hanging fruit. What could be purely will be science and technology. Why? Because of mutual interest and uh, both countries have expertise in it, uh, member countries, especially in space technology, biotechnology, information technology, and it shall give a very tangible outcome because in terms of when we do joint publication, in terms of patents, in terms of publication and innovation. Also student exchanges and joint degree programs, as uh, uh, the, His Excellency just now mentioned that Many universities are working together. So that could be, uh, uh, again, could be a low-hanging fruit. Uh, science and technology has a global relevance because it, it provides a lot of global scientific leadership. So this is also very, very relevant today. Uh, resource pooling can be one area, can be quickly done. Uh, science and technology involving interdisciplinary collaboration and industry engagement aligning with national policies. Uh, but, uh, you know, but this is not easy. It's very easy to say that we can do that. I think for that we need uh, very clear-cut objectives. We need to have a action plans. We need our structure, governance structure. Incidentally, we have, uh, uh, we have government, uh, central government, government of India being represented here. We need to have a working group. We need to have steering committees. We need to have task force. We have to resource mobilization for all this. And we also have to have very open and a regular communication, coordination, monitoring, evaluation, quality assurance, and regulatory accreditation. Because this is the most, and the most difficult thing is how do we overcome bureaucratic and administrative barriers? Because whenever we are working at a government level, this could be one of these areas. So, uh, so uh, you know, the last, uh, last uh, BRICS summit where education ministers met, uh, that was seventh meeting uh, of BRICS in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Russia uh, way back in uh, 2020. And this year again, I think 2024 again, uh, BRICS is being uh, chaired by Russia again, which is going to happen later part of this year. But what happened in the last 2020 when Russia hosted this BRICS summit? You know, it, it said that uh, it will bring about network university cooperation so that we can uh, overcome the challenges and opportunities for 4.0 industry revolution. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, such a noble uh, HE collaboration is happening for the first time in India, and uh, such collaboration can help build foundation of a mutual respect and understanding, which is the basis of uh, comprehensive cooperation. And through such collaboration, we can certainly collectively address global challenges and overall socio-economic development and cooperation. So thank you so much, dhanyavad, and how do you say in Russian, spasiba, thank you. Dr. Varma, shukriya. Thank you. Yes, we will, ha we will have a special panel discussion dedicated to BRICS, to relations in BRICS. При, пригласить сюда к микрофону ректора Высшей школы экономики Анисимова Никиту Юрьевича. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Я получил задачу выступить за две минуты. Я попробую это сделать. Во-первых, я хочу сказать, что чтобы провести такое представительное совещание российских университетов, надо всегда проводить его в Дели. Нас здесь очень много приехало. Это очень приятно видеть. Здесь действительно география всей страны. Здесь я вот видел своих друзей, ректоров и Архангельск, и Курск, и Севастополь, Йошкар-Ала, Саранск, Томск, 
Якутск, огромное количество городов, вся Россия представлена здесь. О чем это говорит? Во-первых, мы все ректоры благодарны за организацию, за то, что мы здесь собрались. И, конечно, я бы, предвосхищая результаты саммита, сказал бы организаторам, что мы бы, конечно, видели, чтобы эта площадка саммита работала на постоянной основе. На постоянной основе. Это очень важно. Второе. Для всех, кто участвует в саммите, кто будет работать все эти три дня, конечно, нам очень важно, вот то, что прозвучало в предыдущем выступлении, образование – это не рынок, образование – это ценность. И когда университеты учат студентов, они формируют будущее. Когда мы вместе учим студентов, мы вместе формируем будущее. В этом идея объединения БРИКС, где объединены наши страны. Мы вместе формируем будущее. Для этого мы здесь. Это тоже очень важно. Я прошу это не забывать. И, наверное, третье, чем я должен завершить, чтобы уложиться в две минуты. Я хочу сказать, что университеты – это и образование, и наука, и культура. И культура, которая впитала в себя всю цивилизационную сущность наших великих государств – России и Индии. И вот культура, она проникает через книги, через детство, через молодежь. Наверное, здесь многие выросли на книге «Старик Хатабыч». Ну, многие из нас читали, вот кто в России. И я тоже читал, я на всю жизнь запомнил. Мне кажется, это могло бы стать вот очень важным тезисом для каждого из России, кто работает, для каждого из Индии, кто работает в образовании и строит совместные связи. Хинди, Руси, хайп хай. Вот я это выучил из детской книги. И наши цивилизации всегда должны быть братьями, всегда должны быть вместе. Всегда будем вместе. Спасибо огромное за это мероприятие. Удачи всем. Я хочу поблагодарить всех выступавших. Я думаю, что те, кто присутствует в зале, также благодарны за эти ценные выступления, которые прозвучали. Это Денис Евгеньевич Алипов, посол Российской Федерации в Индии, Павел Шевцов, заместитель руководитель Россотрудничества, Прадип Кумар Гупта, ректор университета Шарды, доктор Гьяни, президент Ассоциации поставщиков медицинских услуг, заместитель Министр просвещения Российской Федерации Денис Евгеньевич Грибов, Ратан Ватал, член секретариата и экономический советник, премьер-министра Индии, Александр Рыбас, торговый представитель Российской Федерации в Индии, доктор Макеш Варма, заместитель ректора университета Индропрадеш и Никита Анисимов, ректор Высшей школы экономики. Спасибо. На этом наша... Панельная сессия заканчивается, и я передаю слово заместителю руководителя Россотрудничества Павлу Анатольевичу Шевцову, который станет модератором первого нашей панельной дискуссии. Да, все прошу. Тогда я прошу президиум. Закончил свою работу. Спасибо. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Presidium leaves the hall, we continue with our discussions. The first panel discussion will start. Uh, the moderator will be uh, Mr. Shifts of Pavel. <laughs>